Hi, good morning ladies and gentlemen. My name is Keith Thomas and I'm here today to talk to you about my story, Life After Illness. A little bit about, a little about myself before we start. When I was 16, I had my first job as a baker. Unfortunately, after a few years, I developed an allergy to flour. So I changed jobs and I became a coach trainer, following in the footsteps of my twin brother, who recently got his PCE license. Great job, coach trainer. It's one where I met my wife, Jane, uh, who is affectionately known now as Mrs. T. So while I was coach driving, I was away in Blackpool. Yes, I was away in Blackpool, and the room I stayed at had a lovely ensuite. And when I came home, I said to Mrs. T, I've seen how I'd like to do the bathroom. Uh, so we went out and we got the tiles, we had it all that, and it really turned out nice. <clears throat> so after that, I said, do you know what, I'd like to become a plumber. So <laughs> again, another career change. I gave up the coach driving, got a job in a factory. This enabled me to go back to college a couple of nights a week. And after four years, I became a plumber. I even passed my gas exams and I was Corgi registered for five years. <laughs> Unfortunately, the plumbing didn't work out. So I went back into the factory. I was invited back to the factory uh, in a more senior role. And this is when my health really started to go downhill when I was back in the factory. Uh, I seemed to be spending a lot more time back and forth in me. Uh, this was with severe pain, diarrhea, quite a lot of blood loss. This was affecting my general health and I was losing a lot of weight. And in 2008, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis slash Crohn's. I was so glad we got the Crohn's bit wrong because my sister had Crohn's for <coughs> 20 years, my younger sister. And having ulcerative colitis, I definitely had to let it heal, i got to be honest. So I was treated with medication, steroids, you can see the wound face, immunal suppressants, and this went on for four years. I would have regular checkups with a consultant at Morrison Hospital. There would be blood checks all the time, and they'd be checking my blood just to make sure that the medication wasn't damaging my system. And many hours in A&E, I'm sure we can all relate to that. Then in 2012, things came to a head. Uh, I was experienced severe cramps, had a fever. I went to the out of hours in Morriston, and they sent me across town to Singleton Hospital where I was admitted for the next 10 days. They um, pumped me full of intravenous drugs, steroids, to stop my bowel perforating, and he did this for the next 10 days. It was there I met my surgeon, Mr. Court, who was a colorectal surgeon, and he actually said, your bowel is no good, it's got to go. So I was penciled in uh, for 10 days later, and on June the 19th, 2012, home of the stoma was born. Yes, I have made my stoma. <laughs> Following a 10 hour operation, I woke up to find my dad had been waiting all day just to make sure I was okay. And when he was happy I was okay, he went off, they wheeled me up to the ward just in time to watch an international football game. <laughs> so, um, when I was in hospital for the recovering from the stoma surgery, I really had this urge to um, write everything down and I didn't know why. And uh, so many people had helped me. There'd be people that I talked to about uh, stomas, internal cultures, and they had helped me decide that I wanted one operation and one recovery. I was actually back in work uh, six weeks to the day after the operation. Probably a bit quick, but, uh, but I felt I needed to help others. And this was when I stumbled upon Pelican Health Care on Twitter. And this was an absolute game changer for me because Pelican Healthcare were asking for real life stories for their website. Uh, I wrote my story down, then I gave it to my teacher wife who edited it so everybody else could understand it. Trust me, they couldn't at first. 
I submitted it to Pelican, they tweeted it, and then I retweeted it around the world. I was called a Twitter fiend at one time. So social media was now my preferred platform. First there was Twitter, and then there was Facebook, and finally Instagram. And this, the, these are the three medias I use to this day. And the reason for using social media were becoming clearer now. Out there were communities who were supporting each other, online groups giving help and reassurance to each other. There was encouragement for people when they had down days. And just as important, there was advice and also raising awareness, which I must say in the last six years, the awareness has been raised about Crohn's, colitis, sandstormers is, is mind blowing. It really is. So social media, social media made way for mass media. Um, I was contacted by a young reporter. Um, yeah, young, young reporter, Chad Welsh, and he wanted to do a story for the local paper. So he sent a photographer along, and uh, <coughs> we had a lovely story in the Evening Post and the Left the Star. And after this, both Chad and I were invited on to Radio Wales to have a chat with Jason McGavitt, and we did a, a talk on his show. After this, I had a chance to become the next hot topical. I was contacted by um, Respond, and I love, I love the beach, and this is how I thought my future was on the beach, wearing a wrap when I'm on the beach, and if I was swimming, I'd wear a rash vest. But they asked me if I'd model some swimming shorts, and these are the swimming shorts, and I was very lucky they let me take them home as well. I also had other publications that were interested now. Uh, a lot of you might know the IA magazine in the Austin Main Journal. And on the end there, there's Billy the Bear from Stormerwise. And I was very lucky, they even put me in the 2016 calendar with that picture. And the middle picture there, that's uh, my employees first company. And they, the quarterly journal, I was recognized as having a positive attitude and approach in spite of my disability. So I was very keen to use my publicity now for some fundraising for charity. I'm not camera shy, for those who haven't noticed. <laughs> and I've always been a fan of the selfie. So one day, one of the boys from work said to me, I bet you couldn't post a selfie online every day for the whole year. What a challenge. So, <clears throat> it was as a result of this, I saw the opportunity to raise money for Marie Curie, as I recently lost a friend to cancer. And so, the selfie challenge was born. Day one was with my daughter on her birthday. And other family members joined in, friends, colleagues, brides, we were invited to quite a lot of weddings. <coughs> and you may even notice, there were a few celebrities. There was Shani from The Wave, there was Wynne Evans, Go Compare Man, mm -hmm. and even our own Wayne Rutledge from The Swans. And at the end of the selfie challenge, there was a total race for Marie Curie, and it was 3,600 50 pound and nine pence, which all went straight to manicure. <coughs> so, how do you follow that? Well, a new venture. Within days, I was wondering what I could do next. <coughs> I'd already signed up to the Crohn's and Colitis Walk It along the Swansea Seafront, and I'd managed to raise 328 pounds. So I thought, well, if I can do that, how about I walk 5k a week? for a cool year. So it's just over three miles every week for a cool year. And that's what we did. The Walk With Keith Challenge took off. 
Every first Sunday of the month, I would invite people along to walk with me. And that year went really quick. And I downloaded an app on my phone. And these were actually screenshots from my phone. And I would put those up online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And people could see when I walked, how I walked, so that I was keeping my promise to do the walking. Come rain or shine, the walks went on. And believe me, there was a lot of rain. So even a mate of mine in work, who was a keen walker, and he promised me a selfie at the top of Penavan. So I climbed ten Penavan with these two lovely gentlemen, Paul Hancock and Darren Thomas. And as you can see from my Instagram, I even got my belly out at the top of Penavan. <laughs> All together with the walk it and the year long walk in, again I managed to raise £1,638, and that all went to Crohn's and Twenties UK. So the fundraising continued. I decided I wanted to do a skydive for the British Heart Foundation. Um, the reason the British Heart Foundation, my dad had a quadruple heart bypass a few years ago, and I recently lost my friend of 26 year old to a heart attack. So I thought I'd love to do it in their memory. Unfortunately, due to um, a hernia, they wouldn't let me jump on a plane. To say I'm relieved is an understatement, but. <laughs> so, um, I was sitting around thinking, what could I do? And the November and the December, this hence the beard, I, I've never had a beard in my life before. I raised money for prostate cancer and bowel cancer through this November and December. I managed to raise 670 pounds. My mother absolutely hates beards, and I get daily calls, when are you taking it off? And obviously being a county bus driver, December was great because the kids loved Santa. And I thought, okay, if I can do this in two months and I can raise 670 pounds, what can I do next? So I set myself a 12 month challenge. And the challenge this year in 2019 is to actually raise money for 12 different charities in the year. I started in January and January was the British Heart Foundation. And in January I raised 332 pounds for the British Heart Foundation. Mrs. T made uh, this mosaic and we auctioned it off at the end of January for everybody who'd made a donation. And to be honest, we were really uh, blown away when the young lady who won it was also the partner of my young friend that I lost to a heart attack. So, as she said, somebody was watching us that day. <coughs> We've already started uh, February's fundraising. My friend Jason, who I used to play football with, owns a boxing gym in Forest Park. We had an event there, Sunday just gone. And all together, we are raising money for the British Lung Foundation this month. We've already raised £160. I've set a target of £200 for all the charities, and this one is looking well on the way. Later on, uh, Gwyn Bynan is doing a mindful breathing workshop in Gosina, and that's on the 24th of February, and any money from that will go to the British Lung Foundation, so I'm pretty sure we will more than make our £200 target. Um, Sorry, kids in turn. Lastly, another of the 12 charities that I'm gonna raise money for this year is Action for Children. And my employees, First Cymru, uh, that's their chosen charity for the year. So they just recently asked me to become their charity champion. No idea why. So an event has been organized this Friday. Uh, coffee and cakes, so if you see any drivers smiling on Friday, bus drivers, you'll know why they won't be needing cakes. 
And finally, um, I'd like to share with you a short video that my employees made for training new drivers, um, raising awareness of health issues and considering well-being. I am really proud of who I am and what I aim to represent. Uh, you only get one life. I know you hear this all the time, but you really do only get one life. And I try to be as positive and live a full life as I can. And my message uh, for other people, they don't get the chance. So I leave you with a short video that my employers made. My name is Keith Thomas. I'm 57 years old. I have quite a big operation where I am. It's not an easy job, it's not the faint hearted, I'd say, but it's a job I absolutely love. 2012, I was rushed into hospital again. My bowel was about to kill for it. I saw the gentleman who was there to be my surgeon, and he said, Your bowel is it's no good anymore, it's gone, so we're going to have to let you know. Right, this is my colostomy bag, or this is your oxygen bag, and this pet all the waste from the stomach. This is what I um, do with every day. Which is not a problem for me. I don't find that it makes it any more difficult to be the bus driver because the most you drive between destinations is about an hour. And you usually find that whatever bus station you call it, you choose, there is usually a toilet. So, you know, it, there is no more difficult. There is like that in this. Look at me. I have a major, major operation. I really believe that being positive helps you. I don't want to waste a minute of my life being positive. That, that's the key I think is being positive. So no, I make it better. Sorry first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. On behalf of Pennacan, a massive thank you. I don't think there's anything you wouldn't try and do. But I do think you should keep the beard, because I think you'd make a fantastic Santa. And they command a lot of money at Christmas time, so keep that in mind. Um, ladies and gentlemen, just a, an inspirational start to this morning's um, event. Um, a local man who's doing so much for charity. And I think, once again, a big round of applause for Mr. Keith Thomas. Thank you.